A peak model containing a range of oxidation states for molybdenum ought to have corresponding intensities in the oxygen peak. So if we understand the amount of substance involved and the relative sensitivity of molybdenum 3D to oxygen 1S, we ought to be able to construct a peak model where we can demonstrate that the molybdenum 3D peak model has a corresponding set of intensities within the oxygen 1S. The idea is to test a peak model that was previously prepared for molybdenum oxides. And the peak model has been saved in a directory, the casaxbs.lbd directory, so that it can be restored at a later time. And that's what I've just done using the input file property page on the element library. I've also just loaded an element library that has escape depth corrected Schofield cross sections. So when I load the peak model, I need to propagate from the file containing the peak model to the data file that I would like to work on. And so I've now transferred this molybdenum model that involves 6 plus, 5 plus, and 4 plus component peaks. And although I've loaded an element library, and I've loaded this peak model from effectively the element library, I need to still make sure that I'm using the appropriate RSFs for the region and also these components. So I've just updated the region from the element library and I'm copying that and pasting the appropriate RSF for the molybdenum 3D doublets in each one of these 6 plus, 5 plus and 4 plus component peaks. And having done that, I can now consider the oxygen 1S and we'll copy the corresponding oxygen 1S to a new file. And the idea here is not to actually model the, the true peak structure. All I'm interested in at this point is to find a measure that I can use to assign oxygen signal and assign this oxygen signal in proportions that are dictated by the molybdenum 3D component peaks. So I'm constructing a line shape from data. And the idea is that this is my measure for the amount of oxygen rather than a, a chemical state analysis of this oxygen peak as such. So having constructed a, a VAMAS block that is background subtracted and the prefix of percent ampersand less than great, greater than assigned to the newly created VAMAS block, I can use that as a line shape from data and propagate from my newly created file to the old file, the one containing the oxygen and the molybdenum. There it is. So we. I've now got three components on the molybdenum 3D and one component on the oxygen 1S. The next step is to create a VAMAS block that is a blend of both these oxygen and molybdenum signal. And the idea is that I can then construct a peak model where I use constraints for the oxygen peaks based on the components in the molybdenum 3D. So as it stands, I've got a region for the oxygen and a region for the molybdenum. And we'll just use the inset tile mechanism so that we can have a closer look at what these peaks look like within this display. So this is insert on the keyboard. Once you've dragged out a box, the insert key will create a display tile then you just need to manipulate the display so that you can see the oxygen in one and the molybdenum in the other. So having achieved this, what we'll do is we'll create three oxygen peaks. I, I cut the original oxygen peak and then pasted it and then did it two more times so that I've now got three component peaks that represent oxygen signal and I've got three component peaks that represent the molybdenum 3D signal. So let's correlate 
the molybdenum 3D to the oxygen 1S by giving names to these different component peaks. So I've got a 6 plus, a 5 plus, and a 4 plus. And these are all oxygen. And the idea now is to use the constraints and the relative sensitivity factors. So I need the ratio of the oxygen to the molybdenum. And I'll just construct that just using the values that are here in the edit field. So I'm just looking for the ratio of the oxygen to the molybdenum. And I'll copy that. I'm going to use that to construct a constraint. So let's go to the molybdenum trioxide. That's in column A of the molybdenum 3D, and it's in column, column D for the oxygen 1S that's corresponding to the trioxide. So since this is going to be the trioxide, we need it to be three times what's in column A, and then we also need to scale it using the sensitivity factors. So we'll enter those press return and we end up with a constraint that has been calculated based on this being trioxide uh, with a relative sensitivity given by the oxygen and the molybdenum 3D. So now for the pentoxide, if this is pentoxide, then this ought to be 2.5 times the signal that's in B scaled according to sensitivity factors. And again, that's going to give us a value. And then finally, we need to do the same calculation, but this time, rather than using 3 and 2.5, this is for the dioxide, so this is twice. So it's two times the ratio of these sensitivity factors. And let's have a look at how this has produced a fit to the oxygen 1S. So you can see that these three peaks, although it's not looking like a perfect fit just yet, uh, are doing reasonably well. So now we're going to use a, a little another adjustment, and this is using the standard report with a configuration file set up so that you can see various information that's being extracted from the oxygen and the molybdenum regions. And the information I'm interested in is the transmission function and the values for these oxygen and the molybdenum 3D peaks. So I need to know what the ratio that the transmission ought to be for these oxygen and molybdenum 3D, and it's turning out to be 1.05. And that's a factor I must now apply to these constraints. So provided I apply the same factor to all of these three constraints, then once again the relationship, the stoichiometric relationship between the molybdenum oxides and the corresponding oxygen signal should be maintained. And again, all three of these must have the same factor applied, 0 1.05, and already you can see the fit is really quite good. And that's based on sensitivity factors and the transmission correction. And I'm yet to actually fit the data. So once I do a fit, we should find that the molybdenum fits to the the molybdenum spectrum nicely and the corresponding adjustment to the oxygen should fit to the oxygen spectrum very nicely. And looking at the residual you can see that that is indeed the case. Now the residual standard deviation here is count is being calculated from counts per second so it's not perfect. It, it's not coming out as unity as you'd expect. But it's a very good fit.